All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Uh, we are here from good old sunny Tokyo with our morning Joe and uh, over there in the evening on the road with uh, Dollar Cost Crypto. How you doing, bro? Good, good, good. What's going on? Yo, 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 MTB Raps. What's happening, man? <laughs> uh, I don't know what is happening. You tell us. <laughs> Prices are going up, sir. Money is flowing into crypto at an unprecedented rate, and we're just here scooping but, it all up. But sir, but sir, numbers go down right now. Huh. You knave. You do not understand. You buy these numbers down, and then they go up. It is the way <laughs> of the world. There we go. There we go. All right. <laughs> so let's take a look at the chat. We'll say hi to the Moon Gang, and then we'll get into uh, the subject, which is a pretty awesome subject, by the way, um, as we're kind of uh, mentioning here, which is, uh, is institutional banking coming to Bitcoin to stay? So actually, the price action today might actually make an interesting part of that subject. Um, but yeah, um, buy that dip, baby. So we got Adam in the house being first, baby. Yes, Adam. Uh, I will be getting back to you, so no problem. Um, actually, for all the guys who have booked consultations, you should have gotten an email last, well, my last night, your, your guys' day, I had uh, have hired uh, a guy to go through uh, and make sure that I have not missed anybody. Um, so uh, make sure that you have check your emails um, if you've booked a consultation or if you have uh, not gotten uh a response from me from a uh, like if you've already gotten some information from me i'll probably get your inf i see your information on telegram i will get to you um, within the next day to two days and then um for everybody booking a consultation uh, i hired a guy to make sure that we can get all that everything sorted just because yeah um bitcoin's doing great right now uh crypto's doing great right now and we just want to make sure that we get everybody uh taken care of soon because um even though we got this healthy healthy dip right here um, I mean, Bitcoin price is strong, right? And uh, this is one thing what we'll kind of get into maybe a little bit later when we're talking about the price. But for now, just um, that's what I wanted to mention. Um, going through here, uh, let's see who else we got going in here. We got Johnny Shotgun, Moon Gang Never Sleeps. <laughs> I love it. And uh, I don't know what this is, but I'll, I'll, I'll shell it because I, I love my polka dot, which is uh, this guy says, time to buy polka dot. Don't be too late. Dot to the moon, baby. I tend to agree. Um, text Max in the house. Let's go. Yeah. That's an awesome picture right there. Can you see on your end the, the screen, or can you only hear us? Like uh, dollar cost. Yeah, I can see. I can see it. That's a cool ass rig, man. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, Bruce with a good point here, saying now we just need BitChute to get live streaming, and we can escape the Google Sphere. <laughs> Not a bad point, sir. Not a bad point. Um, AJZ in the house says needs his, needs his dose of opium. We got plenty of plenty to go around. Let's see who else we got in the house. Um, we got Benjamin Ireland in the house, DCAing every single day. That's great. Um, Nick S in the house um, with his Spider Man suit says, "Is the course worth it?" Um, and I think a little bit later we hear here we have. Uh, Benjamin Ireland saying you'll have a far, hard time finding somebody who says it isn't worth it. Um, talking to both those guys in there. Because um, we got Jack Daniels in the house too. <laughs> uh, good stuff. So nice seeing everybody in here. Smash the like button, hit subscribe. Uh, make sure you share this with your friends. Um, new all time highs almost every day on that ticker symbol there or on that ticker screen. Um, but yeah, not quite um, every single day. So, oh my gosh. You know, I think everybody who understands. Um, the crypto space should be um, grateful right. for a little bit of rain here, a little bit of a dip um, to make sure that you guys um, can keep getting some good buys. Um, Alex P says, That's smash true. the like buy and buy the dip, you figs. I love it. <laughs> you figs. Go ahead. <laughs> I was like, you figs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're being proper. We're good. Uh, so what were you going to say? Zotrax in the house too. Moon gang, baby. Look at that Lambo Zotrax got in there. He, he, he 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 cashed in his Doge, bought a Lambo, because he used to have Doge on his on his uh, thing. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> you were gonna say something there, uh, dollar cost, or not? Yeah, I was just saying like you figs. <laughs> 
Oh, just that one. Okay, I thought you were going to say something else too. Okay. Got you. Got yeah. Tom in the house. Let's go, oh, baby. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Got plenty of people in the house. Art Swab Angelo as well. Moon Giggity Gang. What's good? What's good? And yeah, Voice My Mission in the house too. What it do? What it do? Um, Jacob, if you want to jump on, feel free, but uh, we're going to have a conversation here. So, yeah, man, um, talking about kind of, I mean, what's on your mind right now, dollar cost in terms of just crypto in general, either uh, this weekend or what's happening with the institutions here or um, with the dip, um, what's currently uh, on your mind? I mean, I, I, I can't even call this even a real dip. I mean, I've just seen so much worse than, than, than this. it's like, this is nothing. Yeah. I mean, this is just like, we, this is just like a beautiful time to be accumulating points. Uh, of course, be DCAing responsibly of what your stack is. Always leave, make sure to leave a little bit of your cash on the side lines. But who got, like, I don't understand why people are just like pussyfooting around, not getting positions in right now. This is a gift right now. Yeah, like, exactly. I don't know what, what your feelings about this, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, basically right now, um, one thing, you know, that we can take a look at, I think, well, there's two things right now. I think the current prices are hitting a level that if maintained, right, we can basically have uh, bottoming out here if we break far past below 35,000 um, or not far past, but if we break below that area for Bitcoin, then I think, yeah, low 30Ks kind of hits uh, upon a low there. And then... We, we rebound pretty strongly, I think. Um, so that's basically what I'm looking at just in terms of the short-term price action. I'm still extremely bullish um, over the next two weeks. Um, so that hasn't changed one ounce. And not only over the next two weeks, but over the next uh, several months um, or year I, or two, I, right? So I, I don't know about you, but I do fully I do fully expect like Ethereum to be to run within the next month or so above its all-time high as well as to probably almost twice its all-time high to kind of keep up with bitcoin i think some of the money's going to start flowing into bitcoin now yep. it's yeah it's I'm, start, I'm starting to see trickles into it right now because if you, if you look into the uh it depends what you look but if you look in the order books there's a lot of one bitcoin orders <laughs> a lot of people are doing one bitcoin orders and so it's like if you look on there you're seeing a lot Ordered of 30 buying bitcoin into ethereum or already in, 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 yeah buying bitcoin into ethereum so you're seeing a lot of 32 31 35 orders of, uh, of basically ethereum so that's give or, uh, give or take on the price of bitcoin versus ethereum that's roughly you're seeing a lot of orders like that so it's like one bitcoin orders which is pretty good that means like a lot of a lot of money starting to sort of flow into into ethereum yeah yeah exactly so i think um yeah ethereum was one that i think people are kind of sleeping on um because there's a lot of people around new year's being like come on ethereum ethereum do something right and um, they thought, you know, Ethereum's not going to do anything. And then, you know, right after that, basically almost doubles, right? Goes from basically $700 to 1300 right? And um, yeah, Ethereum, you know, waits to see what Bitcoin does. And of course, if Bitcoin's dropping, Ethereum's going to drop too. But um, what we saw here over the weekend was really interesting. You know, Bitcoin, for the most part, was pretty stable, right? Between 38 to 40K. Yeah. And then Ethereum took that chance to go from basically about a uh, thousand or almost eleven hundred up to uh, thirteen hundred and fifty or so. So um, yeah, when Bitcoin kind of chilled out, that's when Ethereum really can do its magic. Um, but yeah, it's continuing to tap right uh, up there between a thousand to thirteen hundred. So it's it's basically just a matter of time when it when does it break its all time high. Once it does, similar to Bitcoin. You know, full, crazy. Full, this is something I mean, like full price discovery mode, just literally like once it passes that there's like there's no there's nothing. There's no there's really nothing stopping it. Just keep to keep going up and up and up. We could see it's totally possible that once we break that whole five hundred the fifteen hundred dollar range for Ethereum, they could just go instantly to two thousand dollars. That's the kind of moves that can happen to this market because the FOMO starts in and they're like, oh, 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 oh. and then boom, it just launches probably chills out at 21 for a little bit and then does another balance up towards probably 28 to about, it, it really does depend on where people like, the, cause like obviously everyone, we all know that, you know, Ethereum pretty much topped out at $1,400 for the last round. So people are just going off a simple head mass. It's 2,800, but 
realistically, I think it should be a little bit above three thousand dollars before it kind of calms down a little bit and it consolidates around that price anywhere from twenty eight to thirty two, and then just yep. rockets up later on in the market. Yeah, and so we can see that uh, sometime in late January. We can see that sometime uh, through. You know, it could be could take a while for that yeah. price action to kind of play out. It could happen in February, um, but yeah, I think by the time. Uh, March rolls around. We're on another good, solid, like up. So, um, yeah, I think we take this time uh, whenever we do get, you know, some correction or some dip action, and people are like, "What to do?" You know, it's always, you know, keep dollar cost averaging in, uh, buying that dip, and uh, keep, you know, get in there. So, um, yeah, basically, um, yeah, let's get into the conversation a, a little bit for today. Uh, just one thing for uh, Mr. S T E B. He says, uh, "Should we have gotten some kind of notification or email if we booked a consultation with Charlie?" Um, it depends on when you did book it. If you just booked it this today, then uh, you may not have gotten a reply yet. But um, yeah, I, I basically hired somebody to take care of that, um, so you should have gotten a response um, by email um, by now. If you have not, just uh, ping me back by email or through telegram and uh, I'll get back to you ASAP um, after the show today. Um, if you just let me know your name, uh, you can just in the email, write uh, your username here on YouTube as well. That will uh, help me as well. Oh, but, um, cause everybody's my, using the telegram and on YouTube, everybody uses not their real name. So it's kind of hard to link up. With right. Uh, <laughs> I've noticed that too. in booking my own call consultations, it's like everyone has a different name everywhere. Exactly. So it's like, okay, who am I talking to now? <laughs> but um, I'm like, I'm like, wow, so many requests. I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's great. You know, uh, we want to help as many people as we can. So, um, you know, so it's just a matter of scaling right now. So I'm hiring. We're hiring people to basically make sure that we can um, take care of um, our, you know, everybody as much as possible. Um, so no problem. Yeah. Um, oh, just make sure that you uh, continue to communicate. My my website will be up on Tuesday. It's myself as well. So awesome. That's 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 awesome. Yeah. So we'll have well, that will be on Tuesday, and then you guys can dot com, right? To, yeah. Crypt, yeah. Exactly. My name. Yeah. Dollarcostcrypto dot com, and you'll be able to just do everything you need through that website, um, as well as you know, if if you don't know if you don't know a way to contact me, you can just contact me through the website. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and it's always good to have like a, a one you know kind of place that people can interface with your information. Um, so that's awesome that you're that you're getting that done. Let's go and talk about um, you know, institutional banking coming into crypto, right? Um, yeah. What are these guys up to? I mean, uh, one thing before we get deep into the subject is I'll, I'll just share my screen on uh, the Morgan Stanley thing that we were talking a little bit yesterday uh, about on Donovan Sharp's channel with the uh, the Crypto Oasis. Um, yeah. Jimmy here in the house. Being a G, yeah, <laughs> dip, baby. Dip. <laughs> um, and I'll type this in here. You know, it pays to be in Charlie's products, man. There's a uh, special little bonuses that happen. <laughs> yeah, we had some good, we had some good flash webinars over the weekend, um, and uh, yeah, it was it was a great time. So. Um, the one thing I want to share here uh, is with Morgan Stanley. So Morgan, I'll just read this article because it's a very short article. Uh, and this is what we were talking about yesterday on uh, sure. the show with Donovan, um, which was uh, Morgan Stanley unit boosts stake in Bitcoin loving micro strategy. I love the, <laughs> wow. the you know, Bitcoin, they're Bitcoin lovers. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, these shady motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, it's pretty good. It's one of those things where it's like, is is that a bad thing? I think that's great. Um, that's great. But it, it says so. I'll just read this, and then we can talk about it. Uh, Morgan Stanley's investment management arm boosted a stake in Bitcoin vehicle MicroStrategy Inc. to more than ten percent late last year. So they already had a stake in MicroStrategy. Um, they boosted it or, or they bought more and now they have a 10% stake in uh, MicroStrategy. So essentially MicroStrategy right last year bought a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and um, as a 
a public company, they have to, of course, go through their shareholders and through, I think the CFO actually stepped down wow. um, and sold his shares. And I think, uh, I think I saw somebody yesterday say like, basically, I think he sold like $24 million worth of shares, but have been worth like 54 now or something like that. Um, Oof. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Still, I mean, you know, twenty-four million dollars. You know, he's going to be just fine. <laughs> so, you know, I or hope you Bitcoin. There was I not many bought- shares, so I'm sure it was worth more than that. But sorry, sorry. What were you going to say? I was like, I hope he bought Bitcoin with that. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. He I got know. out because of that. Yeah, right. So, um, but yeah, he he's a CFO. You know, uh, some of those times, those guys are, are really risk averse. But yeah, um, Mike Morgan Stanley, right? Once that exposure to Bitcoin, um, but they don't want to buy it directly. Apparently uh, they want to go through MicroStrategy, which is kind of like a ad hoc ETF uh, exchange traded fund um, is, you know, they're going to do their uh, stock is going to do well. When Bitcoin does well. And having some of these um, larger institutions uh, coming in here and wanting to, um, you know, get exposure to Bitcoin through this method um, is, you know, uh, pretty awesome because, uh, yeah, it just basically is another way, right? Grayscale is one way for institutions to get involved. The CME, uh, buying Bitcoin directly, lots of different ways that these guys are going to get in here. But I'll just read the rest of the article, which says uh, the bank unit held uh, 792,000 shares of MicroStrategy by the end of December, according to a filing with U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission on Friday. So that's quite a lot of shares. Again, 10% of stake. Um, had a value uh, roughly at the time of $420 million based on the day's closing price on January 9th. MicroStrategy Chief CEO Michael Saylor, uh, an outspoken proponent of Bitcoin, has been plowing uh, more of his company's cash into cryptocurrency, even planning uh, to be offering convertible bonds to fund purchases. <laughs> so, um, I, I, yeah. I love the wording plowing plowing <laughs> yeah it's, i think that, i think that's important right like um yeah. listen to the type of language that that's being used by by the media sometimes it, i mean they have like obviously a little bit of a slant here but bloomberg is yeah. pretty bullish on crypto too so it, maybe it's just uh, uh here we have joanna Alsinger, uh, who is the author of this article so who knows exactly yeah. but yeah it's, can, it's definitely can you imagine like like micro strategies is turkey basing all its money into crypto <laughs> Yep. It's like, oh man, these guys are amateurs, but um, no, I mean, Michael Saylor knows what he's doing, right? He's not just randomly doing this. Um, Last month, he publicly encouraged Elon Musk to make a similar move with Tesla Inc.'s money. Um, MicroStrategy stock has gained 37% this year as the cryptocurrency has soared compared to the 1.8% rise in the S&P 500. I like that stat. Shots fired, man. That's shots fired. <laughs> so yeah, you know, maybe maybe Bloomberg is secretly Bitcoin loving here. I mean, they have Bitcoin, uh, Bloomberg Crypto, which is a s- decent source of information. Um, so yeah, I mean, right there, you can't di- can't disagree with the numbers, right? You, you definitely cannot. I mean, they. I mean, this was probably the mo- like in the, in terms of the equity market, like my, what MicroStrategies did was was like they they were playing 4D chess while these guys were playing checkers. I yep. mean, doing this sort of thing and then doing convertible as well. Like they essentially don't even have to pay back the debt until five years from now. Five. That's well, well, well until the next cycle already, which is yep. magnificent because if they if they play this, I don't I, that, that that might be sort of the game theory we can get into a little bit later and possibly what micro strategies might even do with that. But I mean, we can go into the topic a little bit more in terms of like the allocation from the uh, from Morgan Stanley, because that 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 was that's really what perked up my ears was like. Morgan Stanley is mostly a real estate bank for the most part. I mean, that's really where they got a lot of their cash and everything like that. So it's, it's, I was like, wow, they're, they're investing into micro strategies and stuff. So they must be looking for more of a solid assets because if they hold that, if they hold that equity, that might hold a lot of uh, value, especially if there's ever like a stock market downturn. Um, and if cryptocurrencies have uh, at that some point do decorrelate away from the, the equities market, then holding that equity from micro strategies might be a play they can hold on their balance sheet to really make them look like they're more solvent. That's that's at least yeah. my thinking on it. Yeah, no, I would agree 100 percent. And um, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> uh, a lot of these companies, I don't, I don't know, like 
there's uh, been some FOMO into from the institutions getting into crypto, but then there's, uh, as we were kind of talking on Donovan's show yesterday, there's still a lot of people who are, mm, I mean, when they see these, I mean, you know, this type of crash right there, like, oh my gosh, like this thing's never coming back, right? This is the end. And so that, that makes them not want to get in, um, which, you know, I understand, right? But um, it's just them not really understanding the market. So I think the Moon Gang, right? They understand what we're talking about here. Um, I think obviously, you know, uh, everybody in the chat um, through Moon Gang and also during my streams and your streams as well, um, everybody sees these as opportunities, right? right. Times to, um, you know, depending on what your strategies are, you know, to take a little profit, but then also to, um, you know, use that to get more, right? And so, yeah. um, or, or, you know, if your dollar cost averaging in, I think uh, I've been talking with some of the guys, you know, you've been talking with some of the guys from the course, and there's still guys who are like, yeah, I haven't been able to get everything that I want in crypto yet. So for the guys who truly understand where this thing is going, right, we understand this is a, a massive opportunity. Um, yeah. Whereas, the banks, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, they they'll once they see their double, they might start getting scared, right? They're like, we're making too much money. Whoa, this is, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a uh, this is a real, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a really interesting kind of point right now, where like more, what Morgan Stanley effectively has done now is given a carrot to the to the equities market, like it, you know the, these banks, these banks essentially can can uh in a weird way it's it's not insider trading but i would call it more of just like they can sort of push and nudge things based off their internal uh, ratings like let's just say jp morgan and uh, has now downgraded micro strategies from an a to an f rank or whatever it's called right and they can hmm. essentially uh, instead like it's, it's now gone from a buy to a sell and then that will actually push the price down because some people are literally trading just based off what their bank is telling them even now yep. Yep. And by, by Morgan Stanley buying equity in this company, effectively what they're telling the market and as, as well as many other like small to medium cap companies, obviously a, a small caps, anything about a, a hundred million to a billion dollars in a small caps, anywhere from about a billion to about, I would say $10 billion. So essentially all these, all these small caps and mid cap companies are now essentially thinking like, yo, I should, I, I should get some Bitcoin on my balance sheet because more than likely, if I can if I can scoop up enough of this Bitcoin right now, some of the bigger entities will start buying my stock up, and that'll drive my prices up. And then honestly, if you know of how any CEO in on the S P five hundred or any CEO in, in the stock market is, is paid, it's based off of a stock ticker performance. So the higher the stock goes, the more stock they get, the more money they make. So it's like they're it's the minute this is this is starting to become a trend where I buy Bitcoin, I do good, number go up, I make bank, Lambo out. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Well, and, and the other thing, right, that it so that's like, uh, I think, uh, a solid way of looking at it. Another way to look at it as well is uh, some of these funds, some of these banks, some of these institutions, um, whether they're, you know, family funds, uh, hedge funds, whether they're large institutions like Morgan Stanley uh, or BlackRock. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there's going to be a time where if you're the last guy uh, on Wall Street that has some exposure to Bitcoin, people are going to be like, what the hell are you doing, right? Like, yeah. how come you don't have exposure, right? And, and you know. Um, I, I think that's happening now, barely. I mean, it's just barely happening, but it's starting to get to the point where, like, what are you guys doing? You guys miss me. I mean, like, since I think what you and uh, you and John started the Tokyo Crypto Show around three thousand dollars, right, for Bitcoin. Yep, three thousand six hundred dollars in the middle of February twenty nineteen. Yep. Right. So from that point till now, US it's, it's the Bitcoin, Bitcoin, which is like you know the I mean some people call it the boomer coin or of, of crypto and stuff. I love it and still still, but like it's essentially oh, yeah. it's essentially done a well over a ten x mm. since then. A 10x, Ooh. way more than a 10x. It's like it's yep. up to 13, 14x on your money, and that's with the main largest cryptocurrency with the largest market cap in all of cryptocurrencies. So can you imagine if they had gotten into anything else as well? Like, <laughs> it's it's starting. They start really looking pretty foolish and stuff. So it's like I think the investors and some of the, the because like a lot of these big investors probably have a small allocation somewhere, and they're starting to say like, why 
part of our company is having some exposure to this. I want some mm. of my big money in there too, because then I can have my stock perform like a cryptocurrency or at least keep up with Tesla. So what the yep. hell is going on? Yep. And well, that's the big thing, right? Keeping up with Tesla, keeping up with the Joneses, you know, seeing what else is happening out there. Um, yeah, that they, they don't want to be the last person they don't want to be, you know, uh, the loser of the bunch. So yeah, they're, they're going to have to, they have to get out either, you know, uh, with the game or not. And I think that's one thing that's really interesting psychologically because nobody wants to be first, but nobody wants to be last. And so right. now there's a few people ha who have been first and, um, so now it's just uh, a race in to see, okay, who's, uh, who's not going to be last, uh, which is kind of interesting. But here at the end of the article, it says, uh, so there's some other top holders of MicroStrategy right now, which include uh, First Trust Advisors, um, BlackRock Inc. Right? Oh my God. Massive. Oh um, my God. Black, I did not know BlackRock was in this. Holy yep. shit. Yep. That Vanguard, is huge. Vanguard Group. And uh, so those those three are, are ones that uh, Bloomberg specifically uh, is right. looking at. So we got Morgan Stanley, BlackRock, and Vanguard Group. And then I haven't heard of the first trust advisors, but basically, um, yeah, Van some pretty big players. Van so okay, out of the two, out of those players, um, those the other two, BlackRock and and the first, well, the first capital, whatever the hell the first one was, uh, yep. th those two were probably actually thought out reasons, and then they invested in. Vanguard may be through passively because since this stock has been on the probably the S&P 500 or at least in the equities market for a long time, they may have been able to get that much equity because they've been buying it in an ETF form or mutual fund form for a long time. So that might be one of the reasons why they have that because Vanguard is really passive. They don't really do many active investments. Yep. So, so yep. but either way, they're doing, people are sitting pretty on that. But what we could, what we could see at some point is companies might literally be bought just because they have a ton of cryptocurrency whether that's because the next stage once the whole bitcoin thing goes bananas the next company's got to say you know what i'm going all in on eth baby let's go <laughs> yeah well, yeah it's the same it's the same psychology as individuals have um yeah. with this which is um okay we have the main asset here uh, which is bitcoin moving the market and once it gets to a certain point to where people are like, yeah, I, I basically that's that opportunity uh, is still going, but it's the returns might not be as, uh, as large as the next one. And then everybody starts looking at Ethereum. And of course the retail people look at it first um, because it ha you know, they have uh, less to put into it, but the, the liquidity is there for retail people. But um, for, um, for the rest of the market, the liquidity is not necessarily there yet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think all of these guys, um, you know, are looking at Ethereum and being like, mm, that looks really nice, but it's just a matter of, okay, how much can they actually put into it? I mean, can, can, can you imagine at a point where let's just say a company has 1000 or 10,000 Bitcoins on, in, in their balance sheet. Sometimes like it could be almost a value investor play where like the, the, what, the company is not worth equal to the 10,000 BTC. So literally someone could just buy the company completely out. Just like it could be venture people like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Carl Icahn, Carl Icahn. Who, okay. I haven't heard they, of that. Guy. Oh, he's like a venture capitalist where they essentially, they buy companies and just tear them apart because the individual pieces are more valuable than the actual company itself. Mm. So that you can see some sort of thing where someone could buy a company out and just essentially take the Bitcoin off the balance sheet and just sell the company back on the market. And he doesn't care at all. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's all sorts of plays that are, are really, really interesting in this that um, I think, you know, that adds to the volatility too. I think, you know, everybody watching the price and be like, Ooh, you know, what's happening here. Right. right. Um, yeah. I mean that uh, in terms of percentage wise, uh, whenever you get this, you know, these types of movements in, in Bitcoin, these are going to be uh, pretty much normal movements going forward, right? Where we have right. uh, the price moving a few thousand dollars, um, a, you know, within a day, within hours, uh, within sometimes minutes. And, you know, that if you go back and you look at that, let's say, you know, this is going from 3,800, uh, sorry, 38,000 to 33,000. If we take a look at going from 3,800 to 3,300, yeah. Um, right. Which one is a bigger percentage? Well, right. Well, obviously, Ethereum. I mean, like any. I, 
I don't even know what company, dude. If I was running an S and P five hundred company right now, my God, man, I'd be destroying the game right now, destroying <laughs> the game. Like, I, I would be like going. I, I probably would, like, I would throw about a hundred million dollars into Ethereum right now, just, yeah. just, just to have something, some allocation, and that'll easily turn into a few billion for the company. Yep, and it's just a matter of um, you know making sure that you scale in properly and able and that you're able to do that. Do that, but like. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. The one thing that's interesting about that is um, I was watching this thing on uh, with Charlie Munger uh, yesterday. And one thing that he was saying um, was basically like with all the stuff that's happening with the banks right now, all the stuff that's happening with the printing um, yeah. of, you know, all, you know, money and all these things, it's not looking good you know, it, from his point of view, and obviously he's somebody who has a, a big say in this. He was just saying from his point of view, he doesn't see he, he, this decade could be kind of not a lost decade in terms of um, people aren't going to make profits, but just the profits that people are used to in the traditional markets isn't quite there as much as uh, it used to be. And right. so um, it, people are going to have to come to, you know, different assets like crypto and, and Bitcoin specifically in order to get the better returns. returns. I think yeah. that's what they're going to start seeing. That's what they're going to start being like, well, where's the money and where is, uh, where are the profits? Well, um, whether they like it or not, um, their customers are going to say, Hey, we see that over there. How come you're not getting into that? And so that's one other, um, reason why um, a lot of these companies are going to be like, well, I, I have to get in. Yeah. And I've been saying this for quite a long time, but welcome to the roaring twenties of the crypto. I mean, really yeah. we're, we're, just, just based off the income properties alone, obviously, I, I, outside if this bull market ends up going longer because of how much institutional buyers are lengthening the cycle out, beautiful. I mean, the, the, if you're here right now, you're you're so damn lucky, man. Especially if you're buying in right now, like, it doesn't matter whether you're buying only a thousand dollars a month to to maybe ten thousand dollars a month or more or millions and stuff. You are gonna you're gonna do very well, especially if you're not investing into, into basically terrible coins. If you're buying right now mm. the blue chips and the light blue chips right now, while they're cheap, you are going to win in this market without yep. fail. And knowing what those are, are key, right? Because right. Uh, I mean, you see some coins, um, I, I could just pull up a, a random one here, but just some of them, right? Uh, they'll do well when everything else does well, but generally speaking, right? You look at a lot of these charts and compared to Bitcoin, most of the altcoins right, are not even outpacing uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum. So, right. you know, it's like you really have to be able to look at uh, a coin and understand it. You know, it's fundamental, um, yeah. you know, why it's like there's some coins, right? They basically try to just copy exactly what other coins are doing. Right. And it's like, why is that thing going to succeed? It's probably not <laughs> because yeah. it's just, you know, um, I mean, Charlie, we, we we could have tiki tuari that list and that's being what have made anyone millionaires. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And well, yeah, he comes up with a list and, and shooting in the dark. Right. And just right, says, right. Like, okay, um, here's, I mean, they're not random, but I mean, he, he recommended in 2017, this thing called gifto, um, uh, which, um, was something terrible. like, yeah, it, it's, I mean, can, have you ever seen it again? <laughs> I, I, know, I, know, I That's the first time I've ever even heard of it. Yeah, it cracked into the top 150 in market cap um, briefly, very, very briefly, maybe because I am, um, <laughs> but, um, and then never to be seen again, basically, right? So I, I think this is one thing when even, you know, obviously institutional money is not going to be getting into uh, altcoins because, you know, obviously the liquidity is not there. Um, but when it comes to, you know, that's how they view Bitcoin and Ethereum. Right. They view Bitcoin and Ethereum, some of them, not all of them, but some of them view Bitcoin and Ethereum like that. Like, yeah, these things have had their day, but that now they're done. So, um, you know, but then when it, you know, and they point to, you know, any of the negative news, the FUD, uh, that's really, you know, uh, yeah. getting people scared of the market. But yeah, I just think a lot of them aren't really properly, they, they basically slept it off and they didn't do their research. So uh, I mean, it's the same thing with us when we want to get into an altcoin is we have to do our research. We have to know what's the difference between um, something that's solid and something that's not. Right. I mean, there's a, there's a re I mean, me and Charlie did a lot. We put a lot of time and a lot of phone calls just to get that list together. And it's not, some people think it's just, it's a real easy thing to do. It's actually not. 
it was it was a lot of discussion. I mean, like, I, there's I ain't gonna say which coins, but there was a bit of a heated discussion at a couple of like four or five coins on that list <laughs> over oh, whether yeah. it should be on that list. But but that's the level of like of how much how much work we're doing to make sure that you know whatever currencies we do ever do recommend that you know obviously nothing is nothing is certain, but just from our best, from our, you know, from our, just going from our expertise and stuff that these have the best shot, you know? Exactly. And, um, yeah, they, they've performed very well in the market. And so it's, you know, uh, the people who understand that and have looked at the fundamentals and that's why we encourage everybody, you know, DYOR, do your own research. We give you some information that, yeah, it took us, uh, we did put a lot of elbow grease into it and, and, you know, found a lot of information. Right. But then right. at the same time, um, you know, you got to go out there and figure out, okay, so not just copy pasta, hey, do exactly what these guys are doing, because um, it may or may not work out exactly. But you have to then do your research and be like, okay, uh, don't trust and verify, right? Um, go in and find out right. what the information for yourself, and then just reconfirm uh, different things. So um, speaking of, um, oh, we got we got Lawrence in the house, taking the, the right look at things. He's like, this is Christmas morning. <laughs> This is Christmas morning um, with the prices right now. Um, but with, um, uh, oh, that's the one thing I wanted to kind of go towards next. So speaking of institutions, right, um, one company which, you know, is uh, starting to get a lot of assets under management is Celsius, right? So right. kind of looking at that, I mean, just in terms of its price right, right now, it's about $4.98, um, which is, you know, Ooh solid sweet, sweet baby solid. jesus yeah. yep so it's, it's uh you know giving people an opportunity and uh greg dip buyer of the year uh for last year right for 2020 we'll see if anybody tries to challenge the throne this year so good old dip to buy baby good old <laughs> dip to buy. i love it um oh there we go <laughs> just added to my eth long so yep <laughs> keep keeping it titled um so yeah um any what are, what are you thinking about I, you know, we. I think in terms of Celsius price, that is what it is. But uh, in terms of, you know, news on assets this, under and, and, yeah, assets under management and stuff like that. I just any new thoughts on uh, on Celsius and what you've been seeing with that uh, recently? Yeah, it's. I think it's really going to start ramping up this year. I mean, after what, because one thing too is like uh, this large market cap rise that we've gotten over the past, I don't know, month or so and stuff when it comes to Bitcoin and as well as uh, Ethereum. Uh, Right now, if I remember correctly, um, just going off the numbers, uh, Celsius holds about half a million Ethereum right now on the app. It's, it's, um, th there's a couple of updates that are going to end up happening. So once once the once the actual website goes up, there's going to be a lot of the actual numbers. They'll show you exactly how many coins they have of mm -hmm. each coin, which is like really transparent information because they're doing something called, called like proof of community where people will be able to verify, like click on your thing. Do you have these many coins? Yes, I do. Boom. And it's a it's a way to show everybody that like yeah these we these users actually do have these points as well yeah. as it shows the numbers of, of of it growing so it's right now it's still growing it's growing faster assets under management or uh, if, last last time I checked it I think it was like four billion dollars especially with the price rises so if we were just on the average just on Bitcoin we're able to get another five x in price along with Ethereum going much higher and some of the other coins that are holding the assets under management could balloon up without adding any more coins let's just say coins just stayed the same as they are right now the the assets under management could be reaching almost 40 billion dollars under management mm. just 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 on that alone that's not including all the extra growth that's owing on top of that so celsius very easily before this whole thing before this whole thing kind of tops out of, you know they could be well over a hundred billion dollars or higher under yep. management well in, in great scale last year right it took them seven years to go from third from 2013 to 2020 took them 13 year or sorry seven years to get to uh from zero to one billion dollars of assets under management right and then uh in 2020 they went from one billion to all just about 20. wow in one year right and so yeah. that revolves on itself real quick so um do you know that the number of celsius is around assets under management at the moment uh i think it's like it should be 4.4 billion Okay, so they're already past the like well past the billion dollar mark, right? So like oh, they're way way past that. Whoa, a long time ago. Yeah, man, definitely. So if uh, just you know something simple, right? Not exactly what's going to happen, but with Grayscale doing a twenty x in terms of assets under management, 
right in 2020 um you know if celsius did something similar right that would um be you know basically 80 uh million dollars right there so going to that you said 100 million basically under management or sorry 100 billion <laughs> add that b in there so, um yeah going to that <laughs> number, some respect it, on that b <laughs> yeah exactly right uh it's uh it's very doable um based I, I on think, and- and I, and I'm, I, I'm, and I honestly think I'm being a little bit bearish actually on it because one difference between Grayscale versus versus uh, something like a Celsius is Celsius has a token that allows you to get money on the upside and stuff where, where obviously people are just buying Bitcoin and just buying Ethereum under Grayscale, which is good. But this token that Celsius has is an additional, like almost like having some kind of a margin long on the assets. So the more the, the more assets has under, under management, more people earn in sell token, the higher the price goes, the more people will want to buy sell token, which makes the price go up even higher. And then more people trust the thing because they're making so much money on Celsius. So more people deposit more apps. It's a positive feedback loop. So this yeah. this this is going to start having in terms of obviously it's never going to grow as fast as Facebook in terms of just how it goes. Facebook. You, there's no cost to sign up and go. But with right. this, this is a financial Facebook where it's going to start expanding unbelievably fast. Like right now we're barely at the college level right now. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're getting to a couple colleges now, you know, each college is a coin. Eventually this is going to graduate itself to like all the high schools using it and everything else. And this is going to explode. I, I really do think I, I, it's possible that we don't pass grayscale in this bull market, but we'll pass them in the bear market. I assure mm-hmm. you of that. Yep. And so, yeah. Um, Celsius, you know, has a, has a, very strong uh position right now which i think i can see when i see alex talking to like uh charles hodgkinson or when i see alex um you know doing an ama he knows this right i think a lot of even some of the players within crypto are just starting to finally realize it right uh, i think a lot of people kind of were not ignoring celsius 100 percent, but just not wanting to acknowledge that they now have a, a massive seat at the table um in crypto and i think uh yeah it, i can see that uh coming to pass and we can see that we've been talking about it here for a while actually yesterday um eve sailor yeah <laughs> <laughs> welcome I, I i have i have some good news i was i, I was listening to the stream earlier and yeah. i called brian at coinbase to set up a 100 okay. million dollar spot order for some ETH. there you go baby. There you go. <laughs> Nice. Did you get it, or did were they were they uh, were they down for uh, technical maintenance? Uh, so down for technical maintenance. It was, oh, too, it was too large of an order, so I crashed the exchange. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry for everyone on the right now. But um, yeah, welcome, man. Nice to have you in here. And uh, one thing I was gonna say was, yeah, yesterday I was uh, looking, and somebody had made a comment back on our video from I think it was like Moon Gang episode number seventeen when we had Zach on the show. Um, Zach from Celsius. And um, yeah, I just watched some of that yesterday. It was kind of good to look back and be like, you know, yeah, we've been talking about this a while and, you know, we've been on pretty on point with it. So um, it's really good. But um, yeah, Wasabi, how. I, I, I'm going to try to have. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. You're oh, good. no, I you're just good. said I was going to try to have. I was going to try to have Zach come on for the next Moon Gang next week. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's have him back. Yeah, it's yeah. been a while. Yeah. yeah and we can right. have, have another awesome conversation. Because the, the so comment that so. somebody wrote on there was um, the comment that they wrote is like, man, I wish I would have seen this earlier, you know? So I think yeah. it'd be good for, for people who are newer to the market to uh, uh, listen to him again and understand, you know, from somebody who's in the industry uh, who has a really good, a solid knowledge base, um, you know, uh, about what's what's happening in the market, especially Celsius in particular. So, right. um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of get Wasabi's uh, opinion. Um, with everything that's, that's going on in crypto right now, We're, we've been talking a little bit about, you know, the price action. We've been talking a little bit about what's happening on the institutional level with MicroStrategy, Morgan Stanley, uh, other banks, and then Celsius in particular. So that's what we've kind of gotten through uh, at the moment. But um, yeah, what have you been kind of interested in and seeing uh, in the market over the weekend? Or yeah, so. <clears throat> um... Yeah, I would say at this point, uh, I'm not really, I, I still think there's potential for prices and all that to run. Um, what, what's going to be interesting this time is, is, is if we see 
the same like magnitude of corrections compared to last cycle because right now what's what is speculation this isn't proven yet this is this is speculation is um <clears throat> in terms of the percentages there's speculation that the that the percentage of the drops will decrease yeah. because of uh, wealthier individuals entering the market that are less likely to sell uh that and it does seem like a very plausible like speculation seems pretty reasonable so with the recent pullback on prices this will be a good uh, this will actually be a good test to see if that if that actually does hold true um and this is where it gets a little bit it gets a little bit um tricky especially for people that are trading uh, as opposed to holding because uh as far as like the market narratives like these are very smart people analyzing the market and they do analyze things like sentiment so it's very possible like we could see things even go against the narrative just to shake people out of the market so um <clears throat> it's gonna be i i think there's a lot of room for uh a lot of room to basically play with the psychology of those that are more likely to basically give up their bags which are just going to be those that quickly enter and exit positions uh, mm -hmm. Usually those that are just frequently on, on trading view, leveraging their entire stack. So ultimately what's going to happen is those people will be losing their coins to these bigger players. Um, mm -hmm. And it's going to happen extremely fast. Like it's, uh, it's, it's really going to put into perspective what people once had and then how they're actually going to lose it because later on, they're just not going to be able to regain the same kind of wealth that they previously had. So uh, I would say at this point, it's really just patience. And um, I know the market is going to, there's going to be a lot of, uh, there's a lot of psychology when it comes to investing in general. So uh, to me, like it's pretty, like Bitcoin's already blasted to new all time highs. It's very obvious, like this isn't a bull market. So um, I am not worried. I I just look at the mar I just look at the macro movements of the market, and that's all I care about. Mm. Uh, so if there is another buying opportunity, uh, I will try to sneak some final buys in during this quarter while while it's still there. And and what what some people actually don't realize is if the market over it, it, it's all within it's all within I guess like a certain band of the the market cycles that we've had historically, at least with Bitcoin the the slower the well maybe not slower but if let's say hypothetically bitcoin were, were to straight shot to much higher levels that than we're seeing today over a very short time frame it does shorten the window for things such as bull markets so you're actually better off having uh pullbacks because it extends out the cycles and you actually get higher prices as a result so um yeah i'm all for i'm all for to me it's it's yeah, completely normal. Mm -hmm. It allows us to get better, get more positions, better positions, mm -hmm. uh, stay in longer, and have more bull market. Like to me, those are all wins. More yeah. interest income as well. This is a big, another third yeah. key factor for this, especially as is if we get a pullback while the prices are higher and you accumulated most of your coins at a much lower rate. So, as an example, like let's just say you bought a coin for five dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, you're you're, you're earning quite a lot more income. Almost eight yeah. times. Yeah, and that's with you know with staking and um, yes, and um, you know loans and, and different things like this. This is stuff that we have in this bull market that we didn't have in the last one. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I take a look at um, just just before I mention this comment, real quick. Well, no, I'll mention that in a second. The super chat, but um, one of the things that we have in the last bull market compared to this bull market. So that's what Sabi was saying there just a moment ago. Um, in the last or in this bull market, right, we'll have bigger players using more complex strategies um, and then looking for ways to shake people out before the market continues because they understand, um, you know, how these things play out, or at least the ones who've been paying attention to Bitcoin for a while should. Um, and then at the same time, uh, in the last bull market, if you kind of compare that to how people got shook out in the last bull market, um, the last bull market, you know, a lot of the money was going to a lot of different ICOs, a lot of different altcoins. And so, and that was, you know, the projects that were being created within crypto. So at that time, a lot of the people who were benefiting from the smaller players not being able to hold for longer periods of time because they get shaken out by volatile moves, um, those, um, uh, you know, people that are benefiting are just 
a little bit different this time around, right? Last time it was people who were uh, a part of these different projects, right? Basically, you know, for example, uh, Lisk, I think John's in the sure. chat. Um, he understand me and him went to a, a thing here in Tokyo with the uh, got founder of Lisk and, uh, you know, he had his, got his ease and then he got out. And I mean, it still exists, but uh, you know, it's kind of a shell of, it, of its former self. Um, but that's who, you know, he, he made a token and he got some Ethereum and that's what his goal was, right? And, you know, yeah, he wants the token to succeed and everything, but he's kind of on to better, bigger projects. And that's kind of, you know, that was the last bull market. This bull market, we have an extra layer. Now we have institutions trying to play that game too. Um, but uh, in a, obviously different strategies in different ways, but it's kind of interesting to see, okay, who's trying to gain more Ethereum and Bitcoin and then how are they doing it? Um, I, w I always think it's interesting to look at, you know, who's trying to shake people up. So, yeah, absolutely. And that's like, that's, uh, that's like the name of the game, at least for, cause at, at the end of the day, you have a uh, big money that's basically running up the, the spot prices. So they want your coins. Like they want as much as they can get more is always better. There's never, there's not, once somebody hits like a certain goal, then the, the, then they want more after that like <laughs> this it, it doesn't it doesn't matter like what level you are in crypto like you will always the, it's the same mentality with uh i guess like even these big money investors is um they have a bag and then it's like to them like relative it's all it's all relative it, everything is all relative like in life and investing and uh no matter what it's it will always feel like it's not like it's not enough basically no matter right. what um so uh yeah i would say really the the best thing to do especially if you're confident on the coins that you're holding um is to basically do nothing like literally do nothing and then um i know charlie has um much more like he has really good risk management as far as like allocation for you know your long-term holdings where you do nothing on and then um 20 where you you can perhaps like see you can basically do some of these moves where you see like an opportunity so um yeah i would say as long as you're sticking to the plan then um everything will will be okay um this is just the nature of the market things typically expand much more than people expect and then also correct more than people expect so um at the end of the day that's what that's why the dollar cost averaging is really important because i know personally wherever this corrects there's zero percent chance it's going to hit wh whatever my entry was into the market it's those prices are are those really good deals that um, we saw in the bear market are pretty much long gone and then this yeah. is just basically the leftovers like literally this is these are really like the last coins people are going to get for cheap because uh, once Ethereum goes into price discovery past its all-time high, oh, it's yeah, that's, it's going to be incredible. <laughs> like it's it's pro it's very unlikely it drops basically below um, like a thousand dollars again because historically, like that's that's kind of the if you look at the macro trends for Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I, I guess to be fair, this cycle will be like a good test for um, Ethereum. This cycle, I I don't expect like even after the next bear market, I don't expect. Ethereum to retrace the prices that are, that were within it, its previous market cycle. So prices of $1,400 or lower, if you relate it to the 2017 boom, uh, Bitcoin just has never done that. It has never retraced to prices within its um, its previous all time high within a bear market. And if it, if it were to, let's say, do that now, it's that just means like the, you're still within the current market cycle. And the the blow off top phase just hasn't really happened yet so uh it re i would say the 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 retail that's getting into the market now i it, things are no way near as close as um it's still a long way to go before things start to resemble some of the like the exuberance and just like the the um, always go up forever, basically emotions like that you see right. typically in blow off tops. We're just not, we're not at that stage of the market yet. Not even close. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, John's in the chat. He says, someone reassure me. I think right there, that information <laughs> that, that Wasabi gave, I think that is reassuring, right? Um, to understand that, you know, these prices, right. And we were, we've been saying this, you know, uh, time and time again, throughout the last quarter, um, is you know a lot of these prices you know the last time you can get some of these prices right so yeah. uh, ethereum uh, around a thousand um 
you know, Bitcoin around 30,000, uh, well, 35,000 right now. Um, and then in terms of, you know, just these prices, it's, yeah, it's buy these dips while they're here because they don't stay along uh, around forever. Um, and uh, we have uh, Sambles33, welcome. I uh, haven't seen you in here before, so uh, hit that subscribe button and like, appreciate you. It says, love your knowledge and enthusiasm. Uh, I looked uh, for you guys on Crypto Basis yesterday, and I'm totally bummed I missed it. Um, do you do one-on-one -on -one consults? Yes, we do. Um, head over to cultivatecrypto.com, uh, and you can uh, get in touch with me there, or charlie at cultivatecrypto.com. Um, you can reach me out there. Every, every social media as well, I am Cultivate Crypto. Um, and then same with these guys. Got Dollar Cost Crypto over here, getting his website soon this week, and then also um, his uh, Twitter. Um, and then we don't have it on, on there today, but... Wasabi is look into crypto uh, on Twitter and you can reach out to uh, him there as well. So yeah, we're all happy to uh, uh, speak with you guys. So appreciate the super chat there. Thank you very much. Um, in addition, we got Papa Saba uh, saying tacos. Tacos. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the 499 super chat. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate the, um, you know, just uh, supporting the stream here with that super chat. Much appreciated. What would what, uh, uh, Papa just say? Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. Go ahead. I was like, Papa should have said, like, Moon Gang gets me WAP. <laughs> I was just going to say, Greg's on point here with Filecoin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. So, um, yeah. No, I, oh, sorry. No, I'm just like, I just was just, I was thinking about this the other day, too. Like, Ethereum could hit $20,000, dude. It could be a 20, there could be a 20K Christmas in 22, man. For all we know, <laughs> for Ethereum, that's a lot. That's a that's a lot per Ethereum, and you're you're able to buy Ethereum right now for basically a thousand and some change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I I just uh, sorry. I was just uh, <laughs> Papa Samba is like, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so uh, our friend uh, DTF, I think I can't um, see it in the chat because he said he put a super chat in earlier i think i saw one that yeah maybe i might may have missed um for some reason it's not showing up here so i can't look at it you can put it back um in as just you know uh type it in the chat right and then if you type it in there i'll, I'll show it on the screen you don't have to re-put in the super chat but i appreciate that man um casey <laughs> my super chat cayman island uh, yeah party 2023 baby <laughs> Oh, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. So, um, make yachts no, great again. Sorry, make yachts great again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, no, I appreciate your your outlook on that wasabi. Um, you know, earlier with uh, what's what's happening in the crypto market because I think um, we all share a similar point of view, but it's always good to kind of repeat or, or um, look at it from another angle as to you know like what we're seeing in the market because I think a lot of people when you know the volatility hits their animal brain kicks in and they either go to they, they go to fear 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 and they stop thinking logically and they don't um remember those things that we've talked about like that in the past so it's always uh, awesome to you know just look at the data look at what's happening and uh, we're still bullish everything's um just fine um you know chill buy the dip and we're all good here um uh we have uh i guess uh time to kind of shift into uh, another subject here. So whatever other subjects you guys are thinking, we can go with those, or I can go into the chat, take a look at uh, what guys are asking us. Uh, however you want to take uh, this next portion of the show here, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. Like, Anything you're interested in talking about, or should I look in the chat and see what we're, we've got going on? Let's, let's talk about, let's see what the chat's saying for a little bit. All right, yeah, let's take a look let's at the chat, questions. show some love from our moon gang. Um, Let's see here. Um, appreciate Papa Samba. He says, love the show. Um, very informal. Yeah, we're just chilling here uh, and enjoy the guests that you have. Appreciate you, sir. Appreciate you. Um, we're here to have a good time, but also let you guys know the crypto knowledge and, you know, uh, infotainment um, and uh, enjoyment is also, um, you know, solid. Um, let's see here. So our friend How to Fight says, um, there's news of a big surge of miners selling large quantities, which is creating this downwards pressure. So I think that's definitely one way to look at it as well. Uh, I think that's been definitely in the news uh, in crypto over the weekend. Um, let's see here. What else we got? Mm. 
Mm -mm, keep scrolling. All right. So we got this question on my stream on Friday. I mentioned this, but I'm kind of curious to get your guys' opinion as well. What do you guys think about Max Kaiser's 2020, uh, $220,000 Bitcoin call by the end of this year? That, uh, <laughs> Pretty that's bullish. A, that's a, yeah, that's bullish, man. I mean, I don't know. I, call me a bear, but I mean, the most I could see Bitcoin maybe rising would be like, 120 maybe 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 160,000 for bitcoin but 220 is a bit high man i mean who knows i mean if it happens let's i'll take it Shit. yeah it'd be the call of the year uh he was on stansbury research uh giving that call which is also a, a pretty solid uh channel and one thing that they showed in terms of his previous calls um right was uh, i forget which number it was exactly but i think it was um it was the end of one other time and they showed just like 10 or 15 other people's calls. Uh, I think it was what, what price will Bitcoin hit by the end of the 2020? And he said 28 K. Um, and I think there's, I think Bobby Lee, who I, I have not seen again. Um, he, he had said something like a million dollars several years back, but this was like from 2018 when they were making these calls. Ah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, he was saying the end of 2020, 28K. So he was pretty spot on with that. I'd say it's the closest of the bunch. Um, and then, you know, McAfee, um, not 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 call it a million as well, which uh, yeah. uh, unfortunately uh, did not hit. Um, but, you know, I think it, it's good to be bullish, but then it's good to, you know, uh, understand what's possible. And I mean, Max Kaiser, he's been paying attention to Bitcoin since it was $1. So I, I won't you know, say it, it's wrong or anything. I think it's definitely possible, but it's definitely on the um, mega bullish end uh, for sure. Um, let's see. He also, I mean, there's also, he he runs a portion of the narrative with Bitcoin. Right. So that's, there's that too, right? Where he, he wants to run a specific narrative potentially. He actually, he made a lot of young guys actually really rich from watching RT back in the day. Yeah. I mean, really like, I mean, he made a lot of teenagers actually a lot of money because they, they were listening to him and they got they got in really early into uh into Bitcoin and stuff. So like, ton of people on Twitter. I mean, on Twitter, but like on Reddit mostly, because they're not trying to show their faces. But I uh, told them about Bitcoin in 2013 and 11 and all that stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah, and getting in some hundred dollars. Um, I mean, yeah, if you get in uh, on Bitcoin while well, it's cheap. Yeah, then it's a matter of holding it. I think he was mentioning he gave, I think it was Alec Baldwin he was talking about. He was like, I gave him like 10,000 Bitcoin or, or something like that back in the day, or I forget exactly where he convinced him to buy that much. I forget what the story was 100%. But um, he's saying like, yeah, but um, then he lost it. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> but, you know, you can't help them all, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. But we got our friend Jared Robert in the house giving us the five dollars super chat. And said, uh, "Moon meth hex sell and uh, maybe one coin of choice." Um, so, in terms of, I guess, uh, when is the question? So, I, I guess you guys, if you want to talk about uh, the moon math projections for for those three coins, we've talked about it at the end of the uh, year uh, show, right? At the end of right. last year, the last moon game before uh, the new year. We talked about where we think they could go within this year, but we could talk about that again and maybe short-term price projections as well. Um, what do you guys think for some, for the moon math on these uh, two plus maybe a, an extra coin? Hey, Wasabi, which one do you want to take a crack at first? Um, yeah, I guess uh, I guess we could start with Hex first. Okay. Uh, so, you you want to you want to do the you want to do a long term? I'll do a short term. Uh, yeah, I could I could yeah we could do that. Okay, sure. So at least right now for a short term, I see hex trending towards three to five cents short term. That's between this in the, within this quarter. Um, I uh, one interesting thing about what happened short term with hex is around March fifteenth is the last major major gigantic stake that's that's looming over hex at that point. And then we hit a period where there's still some okay stakes, but there isn't that many gigantic stakes coming out done. So we'll more than likely see a big price appreciation in hex after March 15th. That's that's the macro view of it. And then we could more than likely from there maybe see like a price rise to possibly, you know, 10 to 20 cents in the summer. There we go, there we go. Any thoughts on that one, uh, Wasabi? Yeah, so I'd say, I guess I would say even for, for both coins, 
Um, so my, my general rule of thumb, at least for the market is, is, is as it now is, uh, so both Hex and Cell, I believe, well, definitely for Hex, the, the, most of the volume goes through, goes through Ethereum. So, uh, the macro movements of Ethereum pretty much have a very large influence on the macro movements for, uh, Hex as well, because that's where all the trading volume runs through. So, um, I would say, uh, from that standpoint, um, this is, this is where it gets really hard for predicting, let's say, short-term movements. Because um, you, you can have... I'm, I'm looking at the chart for Ethereum, and I, I could actually pull up the, the chart as well um, yeah. if anybody wants to yeah. get like a, a real, kind of like a sense as to where things could be could be going from here. Let's do so it. Let me see, do a, a share screen here just a sec. I'm going to... You know, I was also taking a look at that on the show on Friday, just you know the hex to Bitcoin. Mm-hmm ratio which um i know we can't we buy it with ethereum but it's interesting yeah. bitcoin ratio or to bitcoin too and just over you know the last several months like it's had a hard time outpacing bitcoin uh, which is mm-hmm. also quite interesting mm-hmm. we're in infinity there we go <laughs> so here's the here's the chart for ethereum and, and we could use uh, bitcoin too as a reference because um, as of today, like basically, Bitcoin has the most gravity in the market, and then Bitcoin or, and then Ethereum is a is a runner up to that. So, um, whatever Bitcoin is going to do is going to affect Ethereum, and then whatever Ethereum does or, or the two of those is going to affect the, the remainder of the market because um, those two are the largest. Those two are basically the blue chips that kind of steer the direction of the entire market. So. Um, the last major zone for Ethereum compared to last cycle, and honestly, this this level here isn't much of a resistance. But um, but again, the the short term movements of Ethereum are going to be affected by by Bitcoin. So um, as of now, the price is following this this trend line here, and this trend line doesn't have to hold for like the entirety of the bull market. You can have um, trend lines basically break down, and then you get some kind of new trend that forms. Um, but what I what I'm seeing is like a very strong support for Ethereum, and this is this is like a I don't think prices are going to get this low. But the but if you look at how much the price has gone up recently, and if you look back at the previous price history for Ethereum, um, this this zone on the chart is basically a pocket as like a very major support zone for Ethereum, and this is for like a very this is in the case of like an aggressive aggressive shakeout, which I, I don't think it is going to get to these levels. So can you can you, can you uh, read out those numbers? I think because I I know by the YouTube analytics, some people watch on mm-hmm. their phones, and so they sometimes can't blow it up. So can you just mention where that that top line that you mentioned, and then that where that dip is in terms of price, so that people who are watching on their phone can uh, see the understand the prices you're talking about? Sure. Yeah. So this this top line here, this is actually around. Um, eight hundred dollars per Ethereum. So I'll actually, I'll actually put this. I'll actually label it out on the chart. Uh, so this is eight hundred dollars per per Ethereum. And then I would say this band could actually go all the way down to this this circle here. And th- this would be the the extreme shakeout scenario. And I I don't think it's gonna go back to to four hundred. But you can have you can have. Um, you can't have a lot of short-term volatility, which I, I don't think it's going to retrace to this point. But basically, this this entire um, this entire band here, there's going to be buy orders set for Ethereum that basically layers down to uh, or ladders down to basically like major zones. So um, the last level Ethereum really back tested was um, this lower line, and then oh, there hasn't really been a retest of eight hundred dollars. So um, the thing is, like with the with if you look at the the RSI for Ethereum, and let me see if I could actually blow this blow this up so it's easier to see. So the RSI for Ethereum on the weekly, I mean, this is getting to to rather overheated levels. So this is at approximately ninety two, and that's not to say it can't go higher. Like it, the RSI can absolutely go higher. Um, it's just that if you're a buyer in this market, you don't, you actually don't want to be, you want to be kind of wise with your entries and um, wait until things cool off. And the thing is in, in bull market trends, that's extremely difficult because there's no guarantees. Like the RSI basically retraces to like lower levels before pulling back up again. Uh, but in this case, um, the RSI has hit a level of 90 T, which is extremely high. So um, it can go higher. Uh, 
and it, and in terms of like whether it does whether it does or doesn't in the short term like if if anybody's like suggesting it they're it's basically just kind of like a um it's just like a short term guess basically um but in terms of the macro movements uh there is going to be a certain point where you do let's say get one of these pullbacks and if it drops let's say $800 per ethereum um this would be basically a good area to start if if you if you want to add to your bag i think that would actually be a good area to start um adding in ethereum and then basically layer down to lower levels in case you get wicks um to lower levels uh because it's it is very possible like in short-term price movements um but that still doesn't change like the the macro trends of the entire market so ethereum hasn't yet broken out past its all-time high so for now we're going to flip over to the chart for bitcoin because bitcoin is ultimately steering the direction of this uh of this entire market in terms of its macro trends and if we actually draw a trend line for bitcoin and i'm going to extend this line here so we can see how it relates to, to previous market cycles bitcoin is basically approaching a major uh, I would actually consider this trend line a major resistance zone for Bitcoin. So I wouldn't necessarily expect it to blast through this this trend line here. Um, because if you look back, so this is the entire entire history of of Bitcoin. And this trend line basically dates back to after it's uh, after the first cycle, it went up to thirty two dollars, it came down, and then basically it it retested this trend line and held it as support up until the the twenty seventeen boom. And then during this bear market, it actually broke down from this trend line. So it's possible like this trend line does represent a resistance zone. So it's actually not it's it's it, it's in line with what because traders are like people that are, let's say, making quick moves in and out of the market. They are trying to counter trade this kind of stuff. Um, so there is basically some resistance at this level, whether it it basically blasts through we'll, we'll, it's. We'll have to wait to see what it what it does like over the next couple of weeks. But there's really two scenarios I see playing out is you have the really bullish scenario where it basically blasts through, comes down and retests this trend line as support before going up. Or um, you basically have a, a pullback and then continuation later on. And then it could actually retest this trend line at some later stage in the bull market cycle as basically as resistance again. So um all in all the macro trend is going up but i would say in the short term it is gonna it is actually gonna suggest like whether uh the narrative that's on on twitter right now um there's basically a, a really bullish narrative that uh, like in the case for 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 kaiser who's suggesting let's say a, a 200k bitcoin at the end of the year um if you do see an aggressive pullback here i would say basically that narrative becomes uh, much less likely and it's kind of suggesting that the macro like basically the the growth potential of bitcoin um over time is let's say slowing down and that that's something that's um uh, ben cohen goes into detail on on some of his videos so um the mac the 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 trend is still up and to the right um there's been a lot of weekly green candles so um there are going to be stages where you do have these pullbacks and when you start to see, let's say, 20 to 30 percent corrections, um, that's basically buying opportunities because Q1 of Q1 may be really the last quarter where you can still get things at reasonable prices. Uh, and then after that, like it's the, the price floor and everything is going to keep uh, shifting upwards. So uh, in the short term for Ethereum, there's um, there's a CME futures that's coming out in, I believe, February. Yep. So if we flip back to the chart for Ethereum, it's possible that the market cools off until CME futures. And then that the, the, the futures market actually opens up a ton of liquidity for whales to enter, um, enter the market. Because basically what ends up happening is uh, those that are bullish on the market, they can they can basically leverage in the in the derivatives market and then also manipulate the spot markets to push <clears throat> the market up um, to higher levels. Uh, so all in all, I would say things look really good. Um, it's just the the these short term dips, um, just look at them as more of, of buying opportunities because you can even even if you look at, let's say, the chart for Ethereum. So this first circle here 
is about the same length as let's say this circle here. And you can see there was an instance where Ethereum came up and then came down and retested its trend line. And this, this movement here actually looks very similar to this over here. So it's very possible you basically come back down, back test uh, before continuing um, continuing on. And that's why I have this, this $800 per ETH uh, kind of labeled as a possible um, as a possible zone where you start to have like large amounts of buying pressure step into the market. So um, you do get these kind of uh, fractals that happen in the market. Uh, you can't, what, whether the fractal actually plays out, um, you can really only analyze the markets in hindsight. Like this is why I just, you know, I just say, look at the macro trend, don't get too caught up in short-term price movements, and then just use it as an opportunity to uh, basically fill up your bags or accumulate more coins uh, before things really start to get priced out. Because I'm, I'm just going to tell you now, like during the next bear market, during the next real bear market, you are not going to get Ethereum for $800. It's, it's just not going to happen. Um, it's, gone. it's so the opportunity when it's, when it's come, like, just don't, uh, just don't get too uh, caught up in the short-term volatility. Like things, it's things don't go up and to the right like endlessly with green candles. That's just not how markets work. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's yeah, it's impossible for everything to. I mean, there's got to be dips within every market, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, like what we're seeing here, you know, is roughly temporary. The thing that I think is interesting, that you mentioned about, you know, the um, the uh, Ethereum ETF and, and uh, or the futures coming out basically is i think you know what a lot of people forget was in 2017 when the the bitcoin uh you know futures first came out it is actually bullish for bitcoin to begin mm -hmm. with right bitcoin was around 10k when it came out it doubled the price and then yeah then it crashed right mm -hmm. and right. um so for for now i'm still um pretty bullish um for now between for january basically and then um yeah i think one one thing which would be interesting is a lot of people are expecting ethereum Right to go up based on that news to begin with, I mm -hmm. think it will add more volatility um, yeah. to the market for sure, and that could be either way in the short term. But like you said, right, um, mm -hmm. doesn't matter so much if as long as we're focused on that long term objective of we know it's it's going up more than down because we're in a bull market. So right. paying attention to those long term goals as well, and making mm -hmm. sure that you have your strategy set out to you know uh, hold for those long term goals and then buy more on the dips. Um, it is massively important. So right. um, it sounds like dollar cost wants to say something about, about the, uh, the futures. I'm not sure. Or I, you just unmuted yeah, yourself. I'm, not sure I'm, you sorry, I'm really surprised that they have. Yeah. I'm just really surprised there hasn't been much more talk about it because I mean, they're coming mm -hmm. up they come out February 8th. Yeah. So it's pretty, it's pretty soon. I mean, it's, it's really like only three more weeks from now when they launch. Mm -hmm. So well, hopefully, I mean, what that would, would be really cool is with the features is, Ethereum price just starts mooning after that, which would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That then could cause some volatility there with like then it's, with it with it going up, some of these shorts. I mean, some of these longs will essentially close their longs out, push shorts out, and then try to sell the price down a little bit too. So it could be more volatility, exactly like you said. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'll let you keep going on with the the charts here for a second because it looks like you have some other uh, stuff to show us, and then we'll get back to the chat. And sure. uh, see see what's going on there, but no, I love I love looking at this data. Yeah. So so the the other cons the other the other factor when you're looking at bull market cycles is the expansion phases are much 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 shorter than the amount of time that's spent consolidating. So if you look at Ethereum during its first cycle, uh, before it had its first really big impulsive wave, the price spent consolidating over, and this is this is a wide delta here. I mean, we're talking. I mean, we're talking basically a 60% band in terms of the consolidation before you have these impulsive waves. So the first the first consolidation for Ethereum was over, it was 147 days. And then the first impulsive wave that took it to its local top was over 70 days. So the expansion happens much faster versus the consolidation periods. And then you can see basically after the, the first impulsive wave, uh, there was then a follow-on of 329 days, so almost a year of consolidation before then another impulsive wave that lasted 
112 days. So the expansion phases of these of cryptocurrency, the expansion phases are much faster versus the, the amount of time that's spent accumulating the assets. But when you have these really big impulsive waves, you get these huge increases where the price can rise uh, you know, 2000% in any very short time frame. So if you end up getting, um, if you basically end up getting uh, like either over, uh, over analyzing the market on really short time frames, this is where these, these consolidation periods are where, uh, you know, those that are leveraging their entire stacks get completely wrecked in these markets because they lose their coins Oof. to exchanges. Uh, they, and so there's, there's really two, um, there's really two winners in this game. You have the the long-term holders that are buying during these consolidation periods. They're dollar cost averaging. They're not they're not trying to basically get like exact like precise um, entries because the the problem is like if you're over if you're over analyzing it to these to to that level of detail, um, you end up basically never buying and then you miss out on the impulsive way when it finally yeah. happens. Yeah, there's, uh, there's so many people who ask like you know. Is now a good time to buy? It's like, well, mm -hmm. there's no better time than the present because yeah. you know, and that's what dollar cost averaging is for, right? There's no better time than the present. Um, mm -hmm. You're not out, you're not guaranteed anything in these markets except for you know, uh, I mean, long term you will gain uh, more than you won't as long as you have the patience, mm -hmm. um, right? And so whenever people ask that question, it's like, well, first make sure that you get some because you want to be in the market more than you want to be out of the market. Um, for both the long term and then currently with the uh, bear market or with the bull market going on. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just a matter of uh, understanding that, that that you want to be in the market more than out of it. But right. I mm -hmm. keep going ahead here. Yeah. And then and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually flip over to the chart for for Hex uh, just so we get that. Uh, we cover that one as well. So, um if you look at basically the trend line for Hex and th this trend line can change over time again. Um, this is a reference, and it's really just uh, it's really just the guide in terms of where like the direction of um, of the asset over over longer time frames. Uh, but there was you can even see here there was a, a huge this was basically a huge price rise that happened over a, sh a short period of time. Um, and then you have now consolidation over here that can last for, you know, a certain amount of days. and and the, the amount of time you know the asset spends consolidating, uh, you don't you don't know like exactly when this is why even as Charlie was mentioning like you have the dollar cost averaging because once you do have that impulsive wave like you're not going to get those prices anymore so um, just the 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 rule of thumb is like scared money just doesn't they don't make money in markets um, you have to dollar cost average and uh, if you're if you're buying when you're if you're scared as shit when you're buying then that's actually like the correct way. I, that is actually the way to do things. Like if you're yep. and scaling in helps uh, kind of manage the the emotions in the market so that you're not you're not necessarily deploying like all your capital in one blast because then you start mm -hmm. to see these huge swings where uh, that are more like that are more likely to make you do something that you'll regret in the future. So um, I would just say basically stick to the plan that. Uh, DCC and Charlie are uh, basically just, you know, going through the, these courses, like uh, the, the long-term plan is what's going to make you successful. So um, if you get shaken out of the market, you are going to regret that in the future. Um, yeah. oh, most yeah. people, most people do not make it through these bull market cycles. They lose, they lose coins and they never regain. They never will regain uh, ground again after that. So um, do not miss, I'm just going to tell you like this market's going to do incredible. And um, you know, you have these opportunities, like just don't, um, just don't get too caught up in the short term volatility. So oh, for sure. And cool. every time you see an opportunity, take it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, just, you know, like you said, like if you're a little bit nervous or a little bit fearful when you're getting into things, it's probably a good thing. Um, so, uh, so it's a little bit counterintuitive, uh, or it's very counterintuitive. Um, but, um, uh, that's, that's where the money is made. Um, Let's jump into, we have a few super chats that I just uh, wanted to, to get to as well. So sure. um, I, I would guess, you know, another coin of choice just for, for Robert there. So we talked a little mm -hmm. bit about Hex. We've already talked about sell a bit, um, you know, with the end of year prices, uh, talking about, you know, definitely, uh, you know, 10, 20, 20 X on sell is no problem um, or more. Um, and then in terms of coin of choice, I would say, 
you know, we've been talking about synthetics um, for a while now, uh, which is also a good coin to be paying attention to. Right. For Anonymous, though, he says, um, got in late to the show, still diving into Hex, uh, Liquid Hex, uh, 5K right now. Um, would a wise man stop putting more in Hex and buy Ethereum and hold for now? Um, that, I mean, that really depends on the goal, right? Yeah. And also depends on your portfolio, whether you even have mm. any Ethereum at all. Obviously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you want, you might, you might want to make sure that you definitely have uh, plenty of Ethereum, and then you know some um, allocation to Bitcoin, and then right focusing on um, uh, different coins that are that are not the main coins, okay. right? And let me say just one thing about the whole Ethereum price right now. I, I see a lot of people in chat like, is, is it a good price? It's it's one thousand and some change right now. Should I get in? Like the difference between a hundred bucks and Ethereum right now doesn't matter at all because like, like you're, if you you're buy a whole Ethereum right now, whether you buy it at fourteen hundred or or one thousand, right? If as long as Ethereum it's heading towards ten thousand dollars, doesn't yep. you're just happy you even have any Ethereum? I, I know that I know that's not the the most you know, capital, you know, the best way to, to essentially allocate your capital sometimes, but you, you, the guys who don't pull the trigger because they're always trying to get the best price, they never have more coins than the guys who are just dollar cost averaging. Yep. Ever, without, yep. without, without fail. Like, there isn't a single time, like, there, there's people that have had more money than me throughout these four years, and I've got more money, I got more money than all of them put in spades now, just because yep. I've been accumulating for four years nonstop. Yeah, better to be in the market than not. Exactly. And even when the market's down, right? you just have to understand a little bit about, you know, um, you know, there, obviously there's going to be some times that are better. And then when you do recognize those, then you go in harder. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, when, when your dollar cost averaging as well, you can do that uh, on a regular basis. So um, yeah, get more Ethereum. Um, you know, if you're happy with your hex position and um, you know, keep, keep that long-term plan. Um, John, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Love, he's like, me, love, love me, love me. Say that you love me. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, just because Papa Samba put in the other super chat, I want to make sure to to answer this. He says, "I'm a greenhorn in using TradingView as my TA platform. Lack TA knowledge. My question for boys, it for the boys is, what time frames and tools would you suggest a newcomer like me to the market uh, to use? In terms of tools, I would say the first thing that you obviously want to get a handle on is support and resistance. Support and resistance trading. Uh, obviously, we're at new all-time highs, right? Um, but you know, we're making new support and new resistance areas, um, which is uh, good to understand. And then what Wasabi was mentioning there for Ethereum, right? Looking at those old uh, support and resistance levels that we could retest. That's important. So. Uh, check out support and resistance um, related tools. Uh, some of those like Wasabi was using there are moving averages, trend lines, um, stuff like this. Uh, take a look into, you, you could actually just basically bundle uh, tools by um, what's their underlying uh, use case or what's their underlying, uh, what what drives them. And so you can you could probably find at least 10 different tools um, that uh, basically are support resistance related. Uh, so take you know master support and resistance first and then uh also you know when something is at a new all-time high how does it relate to that so that's something that i would say to use at the beginning um and uh if you want uh if you have a you, looks like you have a paid trading view so one thing for um for that as well is vpvr which is also known as visible range that's a really nice tool um for support resistance as well and then he says um what time frames? Um, the time frames which are the easiest to swing for for Bitcoin and Ethereum would be the one week, one day, and eight hour time frames. Um, don't get stuck in the one hour and the one minute charts or or all that jazz because um, that's what will make you go insane or just keep you not paying attention to the correct things. I think the weekly chart is one that when you look on Twitter, when you look on TradingView, a lot of people. Don't tend to look at the monthly, the weekly, or the daily charts. I mean, everybody's looking at the daily chart, but the weekly chart tends to get forgotten, which is one of the most important charts to be looking at. Um, so, yeah, definitely take a look uh, at those I wonder, tools. I wonder why. Because right, it's not sexy enough to have your money right now, right? <laughs> yeah, it's slower, right? It's yeah. like more methodical and, and sticking to the plan, whereas everybody wants to, mm -hmm. you know, focus on just today, right? They don't have, their memory doesn't serve them three weeks far, farther than three weeks in the future or three weeks right. in the past. <laughs> so There's a saying in the course you kept saying that was just so amazing, which was like, when when in doubt, zoom out. Yeah. 
It's amazing. Exactly. It's super yeah. simple, right? Yeah. And easy. Would you have any other uh, tools on TradingView uh, there that you'd recommend as well, uh, Wasabi? Uh, yeah, I would say I would say you guys uh, summarize the tools really well um, in terms of like the what's what's available to you to look at the macro movements of the market. Uh, one one thing to consider when you're looking at charts, even on let's say one day or three day time frames, is uh, there's oftentimes things can markets can can do a lot of fake outs. So in other words, things can look overly bearish, and then at, and then out of nowhere you have these huge let's say bounces where Things start to basically the momentum starts to shift. So, uh, I would say if you if you if you look at if you look at the macro scale, I would say the macro scale. And so, if you're looking at things over the long run, the, the long term trajectory, and then just using the dollar cost averaging strategy, you're going to end up doing really well. Because uh, yeah. this is actually something I noticed in the this is actually in the the hex trading Telegram. There was there's. I think there was um, there was basically traders in there looking at things on like hourly timeframes, and they were speculating wow. on prices that that never hit after the big payday, and and they're still they're still in a, a they still haven't actually like I'm pretty sure there's people in there that haven't actually like bought their bags, so now they're like guessing you know is it going to go up is it going to go down and they're and and the, the problem there is you end up never you end up never buying and then you miss like the entire move once it actually happens. So um, yeah, Oof. I would just say, look at the, look at the macro movements. If you, if you see a lot of consolidation, then um, those are good times to basically start slowly uh, dripping in capital because um, you're trying to, you're basically getting your position set before you get these big impulsive waves. Cause again, we were looking at the chart for Ethereum and this is also true for, for the chart for Hex. Like you saw how quickly, the price ran up. It's over a very short. It's over a very short time frame. The run ups are extremely fast. Um, it's the nature of assets that are are um, early on in their in their life cycle. So um, you only start to get these slowdowns after you hit trillions of dollars in market cap, and that can take. Uh, I mean, we're talking like decades to get to that level. And once assets get to those kinds of prices, like th the big gains are gone. Like the opportunities just aren't mm. like there anymore. So if you want these really big gains, you have to buy when um, during these consolidations, like when, when and, and, the, and the swings are massive. I mean, Ethereum, like it, it had 60% swings during within its entire accumulation zone actually even more than that th through the entire bear market ethereum went from a bottom of 80 dollars up to a local uh, bear market top of 365 dollars and then crashed back below a hundred dollars again briefly after the COVID sell-off like that's that's mm. a huge that's a huge ban but then once you break out from those levels that you have this huge pressure that's building up that takes things into these expansions really fast. So, um, yeah, just, uh, just look at, you know, look at the macro trends, see if there's, uh, if, see if there's consolidation so that you can, um, slowly drip capital into the market. Cause you, you don't want to be, um, you don't want to be deploying capital after you start seeing all these green candles. Like that's, yeah. that's the wrong mentality. Cause then you start buying into higher levels of risk. Whereas, um, if you actually start to slowly drip in capital when you have like red candles or, or really long consolidation, your risk levels are much lower. And then if you look at, you know, for example, like in the in the hex telegram, there's people speculating like after the big payday of 20% uh, of a penny, which never happens. And the price is now basically back at a penny. So now they have to buy at like two to three times higher. And like you just don't want to put yourself in that position. So um, slowly deploy capital, um, to, you know, keep your long-term holdings and just have your plan set up. Um, if you need to not look at the charts, like don't look at the charts, uh, you know, every, you know, 20 times a day, which I understand is really, it's really hard to do. Uh, I mean, a lot of people look at, you know, charts a lot. I look at right. charts a lot. Yeah. And understand why you're looking at it, right? Are you looking at it because it's interesting? Uh, are you looking at it because uh, of a of fear uh, or greed? Are you looking at it, you know, because you're looking to do things too much, right? Like uh, understand your own psychology. Start writing, make a make a trading journal, right? Like write down a little bit, like, hey, I want to, you know, this is what I tend to think at this moment in time with the market, and this is how I tend to react. So, and then this is what the market does after that. Like, am I correct? Am I not? And then, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 
you can start being like, okay, I always get this type of emotion during X, Y, Z time. So I'm going to start actually ignoring that emotion or start, you know, um, doing a different action because of that. So, um, right. but then also like what you were mentioning there with the different, um, you know, prices, I think it really depends on, you know, understanding what, where your asset is, is your asset at new all time high is like Bitcoin or is your asset like Ethereum, right? Still not past its new all time highs, right? It's going to be different with, um, the different position you take. So like, um, with Ethereum, right. When it, when it's growing up, yeah, basically anybody buying under, uh, the all time highs buying under 1,400 is going to be doing massively well. Right. Whereas with Bitcoin, right, it's already past that level and you're still going to be doing well, but, um, you know, it's better to be buying under the all time highs of a, of a, of a coin, uh, if you can, but obviously the newer the coin or depending on where it is in its cycle, you're going to be taking different actions and, and looking at it slightly differently. Yeah. I, when you said journal, all I thought it was like, my little journal, my little <laughs> journal. <laughs> yeah, and just like make it like really quick notes, like yeah, yeah. date, time, or date, you know. Uh, not, dear diary, I am, you know, FOMOing into, you know, <laughs> some shit going to do Once really again, deep shit right I'm, now. I, I told myself last time I wasn't going to do this, and here I go again <laughs> buying a top again. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just don't, you know, write out, you know, um, very quickly so you guys can, can uh, you know, get it done. And, um, you know, that helps. Um, we have our friend always, he says, uh, I, I'm putting this one up here because he gave a super chat earlier that we weren't able to get to. He says, um, what banks are good for allowing me to uh, buy crypto off of Coinbase and other crypto platforms? I'm assuming in the United States. So if, one, if you guys uh, Cheap, have uh, any that specifically. JP Morgan works really well with Coinbase. It's their bank. You don't, you won't have too many problems. As well as uh, JP Morgan works pretty good with with um, Gemini, and I know Bank of America. I haven't had any trouble with the Bank of America with um, what's that other exchange? Uh, Kraken. There we go. There we yeah. go. Anything to add to that, Wasabi? You good? Um, sorry, I can't, I can't, I had the audio kind of cut out for me. I just I heard JP Morgan there, but I'm. I'm just, yeah, dollar cost is just saying JP Morgan um, mm -hmm. was good for Gemini as well as Coinbase generally. Uh, was mm -hmm. there any other banks um, that you've used that you had haven't run into issues with, or any banks that you have run into issues with? Um, so I haven't, I haven't ran into. So as far as banks specifically, I haven't, I haven't ran into any specific issues with one in particular. But uh, I have been considering. Uh, just basically opening up a bank account, perhaps with like Kraken at some point in the future. I haven't, I haven't done that uh, just yet. But most of the, most of the information, or at least like the negative feedback related to banks, um, that's just something I've observed with other users. Fortunately, I haven't ran into those kinds of issues. I, I think at least in the 2017 boom, what happened was uh, there was. I think there was people trying to basically deploy capital they didn't actually have. So they were basically taking out um, they were taking out basically loans at like high risk stages of like the market cycle. So um, I didn't quite run it. I, I couldn't quite relate the same way. Like I just didn't um, quite run into those issues. But um, just in general, just to keep, you know, just to keep in 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 line with where things are going. I am looking at Kraken and and considering opening up like a bank account with them in the future, just as as an easier way to onboard into crypto. Like Coinbase is is a decent; they're decent for onboarding. I don't um, so much buy coins directly off the exchange. It's really just a fiat on ramp. Uh, for me, it's going to be more just ad adapting with what the direction of the market and where um, all of this is headed, even with banking. But it, it does look like J.P. Morgan is uh, one of the um, they're they're kind of on top of their game, at least with, you know, they, they're they working closely with Coinbase, like they're definitely working closely with Coinbase. So um, they're, you know, they're at least they, they know where this stuff is going. Like, uh, I would just consider basically maybe um, opening up a bank account with uh, banks that are perhaps more crypto friendly, such as the ones that mm -hmm. were uh, suggested. Yep. Yep. And then the bigger banks also as well tend to. You know, uh, Wells Fargo is one that I haven't had any issues with um, that, you know, the bigger banks tend to have a uh, easier path to, you know, they they let you do what you want. Not they don't always let you do what you want with your money, but they, at least they don't stop you from 
um, and doing your money onto a crypto exchange where some credit unions may actually try to stop you um, from getting into um, some crypto exchanges. So um, yeah, that's one thing to understand. Um, this question kind of rolls into it. Mr. Gray says $5 super chat. Appreciate it, man. Says just wondering where I can start buying Ethereum. Um, yeah, uh, you can buy it on Coinbase. You can buy it on Kraken, K-R-A-K-E-N. You can buy it on uh, Gemini. Uh, you can buy it on uh, Cash App, or sorry, not Cash App. Cash App's only Bitcoin. Um, you can buy it on, is there any other exchanges that I'm, that I'm missing here that are just generally okay to buy Ethereum? Because I think, you know, if you do Kraken or if you do Coinbase, either um, of those two, you can get them in most countries. And if you're in New York, Gemini is probably the one that, that is uh, definitely above board. Right. I mean, yeah, those are probably the main exchanges to tell you the truth. And um, cool thing with Gemini is that they have a lot of DeFi tokens on there too. You can dollar cost averaging. They have synthetics on there, which is nice. And they just added nice. synthetics to Coinbase as well. So, ching ching. Yep. Little advice. There here. we go. Mm -hmm. And um, let's take a look. I think. Okay. Yep. There we go. Hold on a second. Kra I think Kraken might be the only one of the major ones that actually lets you buy a uh, um, Pokemon. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Crack it. Yeah, cra exactly. And they allow you to stake, well, stake it. They basically allow you to gain interest um, with Polkadot and Kusama as well. Um, then we have uh, Papa Saba in the house with the 90, 999 Super Chat. We're talking about his other question there. So appreciate the extra uh, Super Chat here, man. Appreciate you. Um, <laughs> good stuff. Um, no, no problem, man. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate that you're here and taking in the information. So, um, exactly, MLD, exactly. So John says people are panicking now, but they shouldn't be, uh, it will swing back up. Exactly. And I think January is still be a pretty solid month. Um, February, you know, um, could be one where we see a, a little bit of extra pullback. So it just depends from what prices and, um, yeah, um, solid advice right here. Shotgun Johnny with solid advice as well. Hoddle baby, hoddle. All right. Um, Let's keep going. All right. So, um, any any final thoughts um, uh, on this today? Either on the any of the subjects that we've been talking about, or just something that may have came up in your mind? Yeah. Um, I have one. Well, you you got going here. Yeah, Wells Fargo is such a piece of shit bank. Fuck that. No, Fuck all, that bank. All, all, all banks, dude. Like, are you kidding me? Like, uh, I know. The, the CEO from Wells Fargo, right? He got. Um, I don't know how many millions of millions of dollars, like hundreds of millions of dollars to, to get out. Um, uh, JP Morgan, they actually have uh, ships coming from Africa with illegal drugs on them. Uh, HSBC um, does uh, trafficking money for uh, different organizations. And, um, you know, all of these banks, especially the major ones, they all have dirt somewhere. Um, so they all stink. But the question was basically... Um, you know, which one interfaces well with Coinbase or the main exchanges. So right. that's why we're mentioning this there. Yeah. I haven't had no problems with JP Morgan on Coinbase, but what, one one thing why I hate Wells Fargo is that the AT, their shitty network of ATMs. Oh, it's terrible. Don't, mm. yo, fuck that bank. Don't for yeah. real. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and John as well, talking about JP Morgan Chase, right, has the international issues there. So it's like, you're going to run into some sort of issue with the main banks, like especially with how you use your money. They're not, that, that's why crypto, especially, you know, going towards this world of decentralized finance um, is, you know, gives us uh, another place to uh, be able, you know, to actually um, use our money. And all the things that they say against crypto, it's actually more of a projection of the stuff that they're doing. Uh, so go figure. Uh, but um, yeah, we, we have the chance to, you know, uh, take back. Um, some of our sovereignty and control of our money. So as Mashitki said, banks are not your friends. <laughs> so we use them for the tools um, that they are. And um, that's it. Um, yeah, Kraken crack, isn't really mobile friendly just yet. It is better to do it on desktop. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, there we go. And um, yeah, Alpha... Uh, LF, the nemesis here saying Mashinsky went on a conference call with banking partners wearing the banks are not your friend t-shirt. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so, all right, guys, um, we'll, we'll finish it right there. Uh, so as Nigerian Don says here, bye, 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 bye. You know, don't let the opportunity get past you. Um, Moon Gang, baby, appreciate you guys all here in the chat. 
make sure to smash the like button. We currently have 106 likes and we had about 200 viewers, currently 190. Um, so make sure that um, you guys all smash the like button before you leave here today. Um, and then also uh, on the replay, make sure that you press uh, like and hit subscribe there to help us out with our bot overlords here on YouTube. Make sure that we're pushed up in the algorithm uh, so that you guys can always get notifications on uh, what's happening uh, with the Moon Gang. So appreciate you guys. We'll be back here on Tuesday at uh, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time um, as usual. So until then, guys, uh, peace, live long and prosper, and catch you guys all on the next one.